Welcome to Royal Pride. I'm Tim Rutherford here with Eastern Hancock Athletic Director Aaron Spalding. Welcome, Aaron. Great to be here. It's always good. Uh, second show of the year here. Um, we're really into fall sports are finishing up. We've still got football going. And then our winter sports are starting to get up and running and some practices have started, w workouts and conditioning and other sports. So it's really a busy time for, for all the athletics at Eastern Hancock right now. But we're gonna wrap up a lot of the fall sports. Most of those are finished. I think football is the only one still going right now um, as they got a win in the, in the sectional last week against Centerville. And we'll talk about that a little more later. But volleyball, um, they made it to the sectional championship game. Uh, lost in four sets in the sectional championship, but really had a pretty good season this year. Absolutely, they uh, this year were thrilled with our volleyball uh, program. Uh, went 21 and 14 on the year. Uh, to my memory, that's just the second time in school history uh, we've had over 20 wins in a season. Uh, back in uh, 13, 2013, we went to the semi-state, uh, had a real solid team there. Uh, but this year, like I said, oh, surpassed 20 wins. Uh, that's an eight improvement, uh, eight win improvement over last year. Last year they won 13. And the previous year they had won eight. So we've uh, we went up 13 wins in, in just a couple years. So Coach Rainbolt's doing a great job. Uh, they went four and five in MEC play, and that's really misleading, uh, which uh, that's really pretty good. You're talking about uh, probably, <laughs> not probably, it is the best uh, volleyball small school conference in the state, uh, hands down. Uh, numerous state championships have come out of there between Westdale, Wapahani, Cowan, uh, Daleville, uh, have come out of there and so really competed well in the conference. Um, uh, speaking of the, the conference, Lori Ells uh, was an all-conference member, uh, MEC, she's a senior. Uh, still kind of looking at college options or maybe even might play volleyball uh, in college. Uh, but just thrilled with it. Uh, as you mentioned, they were runner-up in the sectional, uh, lost to a very good Shenandoah team, uh, but just really proud of the development. Uh, and also for the first time this year, uh, they, they've got a youth program going where they're going all the way down to the first grade. I think they had 80 kids involved in a, a youth volleyball program. So. Uh, Things are looking bright uh, for the volleyball program at Eastern Hancock. And youth programs can really benefit the high school level mm -hmm. um, after they've been up and running for a while. We've yep. now had our youth program since, see, this is your 19th year. <laughs> yep. And so now we're starting to see boys that we've had, and mm -hmm. we're into like year six or seven here of having had all the boys from kindergarten up. Yep. And it's really benefited us, mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it will volleyball as well as that continues to develop. So congratulations to uh, Coach Rainbolt and the volleyball team on their sectional runner-up. And looking forward to another good season from them next year. I think they had four seniors, is that, if I recall correctly, uh, four or five? Four, let's see, Lori Ells, and I'm gonna forget somebody and get in trouble. Uh, Haley Dickinson, Peyton Hicks. Um, Madison Stunda. Madison Stunda. Um, that may have been it. There might have been just four. So, uh, but yeah, but I uh, got some good young kids that uh, uh, contributed this year. Um, so looking for some good things coming. Excellent. And we're going to move out onto the cross country course now. Our girls and boys had some success this year mm -hmm. as we got into the, the tournament rounds. Obviously, it's one of those sports that's mm -hmm. one class. Right. So they're running against everybody. Um, right. They're not divided into class like, like most of the sports. Um, but our girls had some that advanced to regional. We'll start with them because our boys also had some that advanced to regional. But let's talk about the girls program first. Yeah, the, the girls um, this year and uh, were kind of, uh, I don't want to say a rebuilding year, but uh, lost their top two runners from last year. Um, um, so they, you know, had some, some kids that uh, needed to step up. Uh, but they had a couple veterans who, who uh, really did a good job for us. Uh, Annie Floyd and Liberty Durham both, both advanced out of the sectional to the regional. Um, and then uh, Annie Floyd also was uh, an all-conference uh, where, where she, I believe, is the top 12 in the MEC and the conference meet. Uh, and she believe, I believe she finished seventh, if my memory serves me correct. Uh, but she was all-conference. Um, so, uh, girls did a great job. Uh, they were the champions of the Eastern Hancock Invitational. Uh, the boys were also the champions 
uh, and that is significant. We've hosted that, that meet for a number of years, and some years the boys have won it, some years the girls have won it, but this is the first year we've won it both. Uh, both the boys and girls have won it in the same year. So um, girls did a great job uh, this year and, and looking, uh, Coach Putt, as always, ha had a strong, uh, uh, did a strong job with the girls. Excellent. And on the boys' cross-country course, uh, we had one that went to the semi-state. Mm -hmm. I believe he was all sectional, which meant he was in the top 10 in the sectional, correct? And then he was 19 well, they, in the regional? Well, they, they, they had, I, I don't remember what his finish was in the sectional. Um, Cross-country is a little, it's kind of a little bit different on who advances. You have, uh, I believe, three teams advance as a team, so all seven of those runners go. And then you take the next 10 that aren't involved in those teams uh, on to, to the, the saying. And we actually had four kids um, who uh, advanced to the regional. As you mentioned, Skylar Schroep, uh, Will Huffman, Daniel Campbell, who's just a freshman, Nick Edwards, uh, who's just a sophomore. Uh, Skylar's a junior, now Will is a senior. Uh, all advanced to the regional. Skylar uh, went to the semi-state uh, this past Saturday, they ran it at uh, Blue River Park in Shelbyville. Uh, some great runners there, um, but it, that's where, you know, like Carmel's, Hamlin Southeastern, uh, some really great programs. Uh, but anyway, Skyler at the semi-state ran a time of 17.09, uh, which uh, made him the third, that's the third fastest time in Eastern Hancock history in the fastest ever junior time. Uh, now he didn't advance. Uh, there was, like I said, some real stiff competition. And the same rules applied. I believe three, three, or three teams advanced and then the next uh, 10 runners advanced and he did not, he fell short of that. Um, but, but nonetheless ran a great race. I mean, you can't ask for anybody other than their best personal <laughs> time uh, on, the, on the most important race. So did a great job. Uh, the boys had a great year. And as I mentioned, they were also Eastern Hancock Invitational Champs along with the girls. Uh, so a solid year for the boys. And as, as you can see, got a, got a number of uh, boys returning. Uh, so looking for another good year next year. And I know Skyler's got it on his radar. I think he's maybe 13, 14 seconds off uh, the fastest time in the school history. Uh, so I know that's on his radar for next year. <laughs> Maybe he'll run a sub-16. Now, <laughs> that, now that'll get him. Uh, I know to, to get out of the, the semi-state, uh, he would have had to run, I believe, a 16-14. So uh, I don't know if he can shave a, shave a minute off, but uh, that'd be great. <laughs> so, well, great successful season so far from the teams we've talked about out at Eastern. Our girls' golf team. Um, has finished up their season as well. How did it go for them out on the uh, golf course? It, I, I believe we talked about in our last show, uh, I don't think we had anybody older than a sophomore on the team. Uh, we had, I think, uh, three freshmen and two sophomores, if my memory served me correct. Um, but they, actually, I take that back. I think it was three sophomores and two freshmen. Anyway, um, they, they, so, but what we saw is a lot of improvement and if these girls, you know, stick with it, I think we can we can see some good success in the future. A uh, few people to mention, uh, or at least a couple: uh, Lucy Cokerd and Jocelyn Duncan both earned All Conference honors at the conference meet, uh, and then uh, Lucy Cokerd on the year uh, was our top. Uh, average, which obviously you want a low average in golf, not a high average, uh, like some statistics, but uh, she had a 54.1 nine hole average, which, which led the team. So like I said, we had a young team looking for some development and some good things in the future with Coach Patton. Excellent. Well, we're going to take a quick break here on Royal Pride. When we come back, we're going to talk football and then move into our winter sports seasons. We'll be right back. A working mom who brings her best to both roles. A community-owned telecom that connects her home with high bandwidth fiber optic. Mom can work from home with fast, reliable connectivity and be there when the kids come home. 
When everyone logs on, the internet connections stay fast and the family stays connected. Nine Star Connect. Community owned. Community strong. Welcome back to Royal Pride. And we're going to go out to the gridiron right now and talk some football. Uh, the football team um, won their first game of sectional, mm -hmm. beat Centerville. Uh, they travel over, I'm not sure where they're playing, Sassina, but they play mm -hmm. Sassina this mm -hmm. weekend. Mm -hmm. Is it at uh, Tech this week or is it somewhere uh, University else? of Indianapolis where University. they play that. So that's where they'll, they'll be taking on the Crusaders uh, this Friday. So another, it'll be a tough matchup. Mm -hmm. um, really yeah, good team. Absolutely. So a chance to, uh, to make a statement if we can come out of there oh, with absolutely. a win. But they've had a really good season. Yeah, um, that, they're six and four. Right, six and four. We had uh, started. Uh, uh, well, we started Greenfield, got beat, but then we went five straight, and then we had uh, uh, played three really tough teams in uh, Shenandoah, uh, Monroe Central, and Lapel. Really good teams. Um, came up short in those games, and then had a really exciting. Centerville had a had a really good team this year. They were seven and two. Had actually beaten Shenandoah earlier in the year. Uh, and uh, it was an exciting game. We got down 14-0 uh, in the first quarter and uh, didn't look good at that time, uh, but kept plugging away uh, throughout the game. Uh, still trailed, uh, what was it, 21-19, uh, I think, with about two minutes left uh, when we punched it in, took a lead, uh, then uh, A.J. Meggie uh, on the ensuing uh, drive by Centerville got an interception, took it back to about the five, uh, a couple plays away, we ran it in for the final score of 35-21. So um, great win, really excited for the kids, uh, just a good solid win for the team. And as you mentioned, they uh, play Cena, who's had a fantastic year. I believe they're 9-1 on the year. Um, I think their only loss is to Ron Colley. Uh, so it, it'll be a good test uh, for us, uh, but excited the kids get the opportunity to get to play at the University of Indianapolis, as I mentioned. Uh, it'll be over there, 7 p.m. start. And I'm going to guess uh, over at Cena, they probably have some linemen about the size they did at Monroe Central. <laughs> Um, they had a couple of 300-pound linemen. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I haven't. Six five or six six, six three fifteen. I think. And I haven't got the scouting report uh, from uh, Coach O'Hare yet. I asked him how are the East Side Catholics doing. They, uh, <laughs> uh, Coach O'Hare, being a, uh, a former Catholic coach at Cathedral, so I asked him what his scouting report. And he said. He just told me they're real good, and I asked him what did they do well, and he said they do everything well. So, uh, so anyway, so we're uh, we're looking forward to the challenge uh, come Friday. I figured he'd tell you they're the best team they play this week. That's right. That's so. that's his common line. <laughs> um, we've had lots of statistical leaders throughout the year too. We've had some really good mm -hmm. season stats from some of our players. A lot of seniors on the offensive side of the ball. Well, we've got a lot of seniors on both sides on both of the ball. Sides of the we're, ball. Uh, uh, I believe we have 14 seniors, if my wow. memory serves me correct. So, so a lot of seniors, uh, uh, and just talk about some of the leaders. Obviously, there's a lot, but just kind of some of the statistical leaders. Uh, Jarrett Lewis uh, has been our quarterback now for three years. Uh, holds virtually every passing uh, record uh, at Eastern Hancock. He's just had a great career. Uh, this year's been no exception. He's had uh, completed 53% of his passes for a little over 1,600 yards on the year, uh, and, and then a great touchdown to interception ratios. He's uh, thrown 20 touchdown passes and eight interceptions. So um, just had a great year. A.J. Meggie, uh, as far as uh, on the ground and in the air, has been our leader. Uh, he has uh, 530 yards rushing to leave the team and 486 yards receiving to uh, lead the team. So he has over a thousand yards from scrimmage, whether it be on the ground or via the air, uh, between running and receiving, has 16 touchdowns on the year. So, uh, so on the offensive side of the ball, uh, those have been statistical leaders, and I certainly don't want to leave out uh, you know, our linemen, they don't get they credit, obviously. Uh, they've got to protect the quarterback. They've got to, they've got to block. Uh, so, uh, you know, some of those linemen, uh, Mitch Gwynn, uh, Jacob Eichen, uh, Brady Stevens, 
Uh, and I know I'm forgetting somebody, so I apologize. So, uh, um, but just, you know, I want to make sure they get their due as well. And if you don't think they're important, just ask Andrew Luck. <laughs> or Jacoby Brissett last yeah. week. Uh, <laughs> um, I think he's still getting sacked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then on the defensive side of the ball, a couple leaders, uh, another seniors, two more seniors. Uh, Clayton Coker's been our leading tackler at 75 tackles on the year. And then Jacob Miller uh, has, has, has the most sacks on the year at four and a half sacks. So, um, so like I said, senior-led team uh, that uh, has had a great win last week. Looking forward to this Friday's challenge. Excellent. And to wrap up fall sports, we have our fall awards program coming up on Wednesday, November 15th. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll start in the main gymnasium. The start in the main gym. gym, and then we'll do breakouts from there. Like I said, that's uh, can't believe we're already talking about stuff happening <laughs> in November, but uh, – uh, with today being the 24th of October, we're, we're certainly within striking distance. And with the weather outside the way it is, let's move inside <laughs> to the gym. There so, we go. <laughs> uh, girls basketball, they've already started practice. This was their first week of practice. Yeah, we're, we're actually into our second week. Oh, second week. Uh, we're into our second week. They moved uh, girls basketball. They started, they're starting one year earlier uh, for the last few years. Uh, where the state finals have fallen, they've kind of got pushed around to various venues because Banker's Life, uh, as the weekend that they had the state finals, have been a host to the Big Ten Women's Tournament. And uh, we weren't going to win out that battle. So, Can't figure uh, out why. So they, they decided, okay, let's start the basketball season one week earlier. Uh, so they're now starting on October 16th. And now the state tournament, they'll end that, that one week earlier, and now that'll give them the opportunity to play the state finals of Banker's Life. So, um, so that's, that's the reason. Like I said, they're into their second week of practice and uh, actually got a scrimmage coming up. We're doing a uh, new uh, concept with uh, uh, our new conference, the, the MEC, uh, where they have a jamboree. You know, and what they do is they bring all 10 teams uh, uh, together and each of the five teams plays one half so you've got uh, five halves of basketball uh, with uh, each team playing a half they play the same team and for the life of me I can't remember who the girls play but that'll be this Saturday uh, we play the third half so that'll be approximately 630 give or take a few minutes um, and that'll take place as I mentioned at Randolph Southern Excellent. Their first game is November 4th. Um, got some newcomers, but also mm -hmm. some returning, returning yeah, yeah. leaders for the got, team. Got a good mix of uh, newcomers uh, along with vets. Uh, just want to mention some of our vets uh, returning. Uh, Haley Best is our leading returning scorer, guard, good shooter. Uh, averaged a little over nine points uh, last year in our sectional championship team. Uh, Jenna Smith is our leading rebounder returning, uh, averaged about five and a half rebounds last year. Uh, Bailey Allen, uh, senior, uh, averaged uh, a couple assists a game. So we've got our, uh, some statistical uh, returners. And then, I, as I mentioned, we've got uh, several newcomers, some sophomores, some freshmen. Uh, so looking forward to seeing what uh, those kids can do this year. And Coach Dowd's back with us and as Coach well. Coach Dowd is so. back. <laughs> Coach Dowd's back. And, and not to mention uh, uh, Steve Dowd, who was the coach at, uh, at uh, Mount Vernon, uh, is now over in our staff helping us. Uh, so uh, a lot of great staff. Uh, uh, so we're looking forward to, to the girls' season coming up. Excellent. We're going to take a quick break here on Royal Pride. When we come back, we're going to talk about the rest of the winter sports. We've lived here since 1989. And this was my husband's home where he grew up at. My husband farms, and he and my son grain farm, raise cattle, raise hogs. We have horses. So we're not super techy people, but uh, having the internet connectivity here has just been a, a real godsend for us. The old service that we used to have, every time it rained, it went out. So I doubled down on my uh, contact with Nine Star and saying, come on out to our neck of the woods, please. 
they've given just the kind of service that we thought they would. I work full time, but when I'm home, I uh, like to be a grandma and mom cooking in the kitchen. It's really nice to be able to just pull up your iPad and look up some recipes. From the full-time business that I um, am part owner of, CGS Services, if I can't get into work or I want to do some things from home or a customer needs something, I can connect in from right here at home and take care of what I need to. Our son Chris recently has gone into the cattle nutrition business. What he had thought he would have to do is probably go back out to Montana where he spent some time or Oklahoma, Texas, but because of fiber optics, he's able to continue the family farm business with, with his dad and do that part time, but yet develop his new business in the ruminant nutrition, taking care of the cattle and working with clients. If we didn't have Nine Star and the fiber optics, my son probably would be located elsewhere and it's keeping those kids um, here working and bringing their families up here and kind of stopping the brain drain. And really good for our family. I felt like it was a blessing when Nine Star came out and brought the connectivity. Whole new world that it brings to you. Welcome back to Royal Pride, and we're going to continue with the winter sports previews. Uh, girls and boys swimming is mm -hmm. getting started and getting ready to get ramped up as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, uh, the girls, uh, I believe they started practice yesterday, um, and the boys will start here in a couple weeks along with boys basketball. Uh, but uh, they, uh, they'll open up their season uh, against or at Newcastle. I believe it's a three-way meet. Uh, with ourselves, Newcastle and Batesville. Uh, leading returning uh, swimmer will be Elise Huffman, who is a top eight finisher in the sectional in a couple of events. Uh, I have a big, big uh, void to fill as we lost Shelby Kell, who I, I think virtually holds, I think, every <laughs> record on the board. Um, so they're, they're going to have some shoes to fill there. She was breaking her own record every. We were yeah, talking about her yeah, every yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. I think, during the so, season last so year. she's moved on. So somebody's going to have to step in. <laughs> and on the boys' side, I think we may see a lot of that this year with Chris Walton. I think he yes, has a lot of the yes, records on yes. the boys' side. Yeah, we uh, the boys, as you mentioned, Chris Walton uh, has broken you know a lot of our records and probably will continue this year. Um, the boys will open up. Well, actually, the first meet is just a girls-only meet. And then they start moving into co-ed meets, which the first one then will be November 20th. And then on the tail end of the year, there's just a boys uh, meet that'll take place at Greensburg. Um, but like I said, good. Uh, Coach McCormick uh, doing a great job of swimmers. Expected good things again this year. Excellent. Now we'll go to the mats, a wrestling program. It's, uh, it'll be starting up real soon with yep. full practice as well. And we do have some returners on that team that are going to really yep. help us hopefully have a successful year. Yep. Uh, they uh, will start practice next Monday, um, October 30th. Uh, they'll open up their season on November 18th. Uh, as they'll be participating in the John uh, Hurry uh, uh, Invitational, which takes place at Arsenal Tech. Like I said, I mentioned that that uh, will take place on November 18th. Uh, Coach Oliver uh, has... Uh, Three uh, returners that advanced in the tournament last year. Jordan Wills uh, advanced all the way to the semi-state last year. And then uh, Jack Smith and Alexander Burden uh, both advanced uh, to the regional last year. So I've got some returners, uh, have some new kids stepping in, so expecting good things. Excellent. Now we're going to talk uh, what's in your wheelhouse, boys <laughs> basketball. Um, year 19. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Looking for some good things out of this group. Mm -hmm. No graduates last year, mm -hmm. so everybody's back. Yep. A good opportunity. New conference. Um, hopefully, we can make a mark in that this year. Yeah, you know, uh, as you mentioned, last year was the first year uh, since I've been coaching. We had zero seniors. Uh, we've had maybe one or two a couple times, but never zero. So we return everybody back. Uh, been really pleased uh, with the kids. Uh, work uh, this fall. A lot of kids putting a lot of time in, uh, a lot of good work, so uh, seeing good things. Um, you know, we're, as you mentioned, return to everybody. Uh, you got uh, Addison True, who led us in points, rebounds, and assists last year, uh, returning along with, uh, you know, some 
uh, great scores. AJ Meggy, Duncan Cherry uh, also scored well for us last year. Uh, Bryson Napier scored well and handled the ball well for us last year. Jacob Eichen returns in the middle. Uh, Peyton Gray coming off the bench uh, has really made some nice strides. Uh, you know, as, as a big man, uh, Tyler Blattner, Tyler Castle coming off the bench as well. Uh, and then uh, Skylar Shrub had some, some pretty significant minutes last year and important to expect good things from him too. So uh, excited about the year, ready to get up and running. Excellent. First practice for our student boys is November the 6th. That is correct. So we're a little, a little shy of two weeks uh, and we'll be up and rolling. Excellent. Well, we've got uh, a new coach out on the, the softball diamond to announce, and I think uh, you're probably happy because he's actually in the building this year. <laughs> yes, uh, we've, uh, um, I think this is since I've been AD and I was, became AD in 2010, uh, we've, this will be our fourth coach. Uh, so uh, we, we've had uh, some turnover there that I'm hoping will settle down a little bit. Uh, Terry Stevens, uh, is, is a math teacher uh, for us in the building and uh, you know just a great guy has a lot of experience working with our girls at a younger levels um, but uh, really expecting him to do a great job looking forward to seeing what he could get done I know they're already uh, got workouts going and excited to have coach Stevens excellent and then a special thanks to the Indianapolis Colts. I know they were out uh, towards the end of September. Yeah, we had a we were part of a uh, the Colts do go to a different high school football game every Friday night, and we were part of the Colts tour. Uh, I believe it was September. I think I, uh, September twenty second, if my memory serves me correct. Whatever that Friday was, um, but uh, they were out. Uh, had some fun activities. Uh, for us, uh, had some cheerleaders out, some, uh, so uh, had some games, some giveaways, uh, they gave some tickets away, uh, and they, they also donated $1,500 to, to athletics. So uh, I want to give a special thanks to, to the Colts for that. And as most of the people in the community know, we experienced a terrible loss in the Eastern Hancock family when we lost uh, student Riley Sedergren, was going to be a senior this year, and uh, they have a special memorial to him out on the football field. Yeah, we, we dedicated it on senior night. Riley was going to be a senior football player for us uh, just uh, about a week before uh, the year started. Uh, had, a, had, a, had a car accident where we lost Riley. So on senior night, we had the, the privilege of uh, donating a rock uh, out at the football field uh, that they'll be in memory of Riley. And, uh, you know, as we continually keep the the Sedergrens and our thoughts and prayers uh, as they move forward. Our, our thoughts and I think the entire community's thoughts continue to be with them because uh, obviously everybody in the community's life changed but theirs has changed um, forever and and he'll be remembered as, as one of the good kids at Eastern Hancock and uh, he bled blue that's what, I, <laughs> that's what everybody says is he yeah. bled blue. So um, Last, on a last note, we had some success with our middle school cheerleaders. Yes, we have uh, uh, Coach Jade Gallion has done a great job with our middle school cheerleaders and they've moved into some competition uh, uh, type things, which I'm not very familiar with what those competitions, but nonetheless, they had an exciting weekend. They've uh, went and participated in a uh, cheer competition at Westville High School sponsored by the Indian Association of School Principals, uh, and they actually took uh, first place uh, in that state competition. So congratulations to Coach Gallion and our middle school cheerleaders. And I'm not sure what the different divisions is, but their first place, I do remember reading somewhere, was in the timeout division. Okay, so. yeah, I, yeah I, I'm not really familiar <laughs> with that. I guess I better get two, up to speed on that. Two guys that don't know a lot yeah, about that, cheerleading. That's but right. Congratulations to our middle school cheerleaders. I understand that's a great accomplishment for that group. We're going to wrap it up here on Royal Pride. Thank you for being with us again this, this month. We look forward to next month, and we'll be back here on Royal Pride.